is BYU Sports Nation, brought to you by the BYU Store, simulcast on BYU-TV and BYU-Radio. Now, from Studio B, your hosts, Jerem Jordan and Jason Shepard. BYU Sports Nation is live. Your day-to-day play-by-play in Studio B, presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. It is Tuesday, February 1st. How about that? Welcome to February. Welcome to February. Tomorrow's Groundhog's Day. I cannot wait. I am uh, Jeremy Jordan, teamed up with a guy who's happy to be sad that Tom Brady is officially retiring, Jason Shepard. Yeah, I mean, I'm uh, I'm not sad. Uh, like, <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, he had, I wish he had done this two years ago. That way my Chiefs would have yes. had another Super Bowl. Yes. Uh, look, too, too soon. I'm not, uh, I'm not in the camp that refuses to acknowledge him as the GOAT. He is the GOAT. He is the GOAT. But I'm also not a like a Tom Brady fan. Yeah. Uh, simply yeah. because, you know, there were there were some battles. and mm-hmm. But uh, there were a couple of times where I pulled for the Patriots. It, a lot depended on who the opponent was. Yeah. And if I had worse history with that team. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, I'm scar such a vindictive there. fan. I really am. To be a fan is to be vindictive. Yes. To some uh, level, right? But, but yeah, there's, there's no question in the world. Like, anybody that argues is just flat out wrong that he's not the GOAT. My, my wife was asking me, well, who was it before uh, Tom Brady? I said, it was Joe Montana. He mm-hmm. was considered the yeah. greatest quarterback, also a chief. Just happened, you know, kind of a for chief. like two years. Kind yeah. of a chief, like Tom Brady was kind of a buck. Like, yeah, like nobody's going to remember Tom Brady as yeah. a Buccaneer. He's like a Patriot. Was kind of even a though Laker. he didn't mention the Patriots in his retirement thank yous and goodbyes. Yikes. Mm. Okay, here's the show lineup uh, with Tom Brady retiring. We discuss who the BYU football goat is. Passionate, fun discussion coming up. Riley Nelson will weigh in on that. Plus, the top five features the top five quarterbacks in program history. So basically, we're saying who's the goat in the top five as well. So we'll see who the production people. When does the actual goat come in here? Like, I mean, we we have a live goat we've coming in, one. right? Yeah, like we've rented been, one. I mean, uh, we're running out of time here. When is it coming in? We're just hoping it doesn't defecate in the studio. That's our number one thing. <laughs> um, and can women's hoops go much higher in the polls? They're kind of lingering at seventeen, sixteen right now. And a look at the construction of the new video boards at Miller Park. This is exciting. Very cool. Softball and baseball, right? Yes, that's uh, correct. That's pretty awesome. Okay, but first, some headlines. You know, Mark Durant has goats. Could have asked to have him bring he one in. He does have goats. He has goats in That's his backyard. Right. Like we could have. There they are. <laughs> there we are. There's Tom and Michael and yeah. Wayne. All right. Uh, staying with basketball. After losing at Santa Clara and at Pacific last week, men's basketball dropped to a projected nine seed in Joe Lenardi's latest bracketology. Cougars currently fourth in the West Coast Conference and host San Francisco on Thursday, and then second-ranked Gonzaga on Saturday. You always on the bubble now with Lenardi. They're out of the uh, you know 80 percent plus chance to make the tourney as of now. That could change Thursday night. That could change Thursday night. Women's hoop stays at 16 in the AP poll. Uh, which uh, now the string of consecutive weeks in a row, I forget the number, but it is a BYU record weeks in a row being in the top 25. Congratulations to the winners. Also Paisley Harding, WCC Player of the Week, of course, after dropping a 30-piece against San Francisco. Cougars play at Portland Thursday night. Portland men, okay to bad typically. The Portland women, fantastic. That's a huge game coming up Thursday night. Men's volleyball drops one spot to ninth in the latest ABCA rankings. The Cougars will be hosting Ball State at Smith Fieldhouse on Friday and Saturday night. Both matches can be seen at 9 p.m. Eastern on BYU TV and the app. Ball State beat Hawaii again yesterday, um, who had four starters out, who was number one in the country. Back-to-back wins for Ball State. So I'm not sure what to think of Ball State because Hawaii had four starters out. Ball State's certainly good. It should be a fun matchup coming up this weekend. Sadie, uh, and of course, Boom Goes the Dynamite comes from Ball State. That's right. That is correct. I've been dropping that for years. Now we can do it with Ball State in the it'll, it'll have more meaning to you. Yes, it will. David Letterman, also Ball State. Sadie Minor Van Tassel is the Mountain Rim Gymnastics Conference gymna- uh, Gymnast of the Week. After winning the overall versus Utah State at 39-4-5, this is the third such honor in a row. And Elise Rollins is the Beam Specialist of the Week after a 9-9-2-5. And Cougars in the pros. We will go to the G League to begin. TJ Haas scored nine points on three of three from three in a Lakeland Magic loss. Also, Yoli Childs had 10 points, 12 rebounds in a two-point Utah Stars loss. Overseas, Brandon Davies recorded 13 points, four rebounds and three assists in an FC Barcelona victory. Yoli Childs, we're coming for you. We being Copper Hills against Bingham tonight. Let's go. Yoli beat. Grizzlies versus Miners. Yoli beat Copper Hills for a state title as senior year. It still hurts. All rise and shout. It's time for what's trending. 
You're talking about it, and so are we. It's What's Trending on BYU Sports Nation. What's Trending is presented by BYU Food to Go, the MVP of your next event. So, Tom Brady retires. It's been a minute. Uh, what a career. It's pretty much the inarguable GOAT. Seven Super Bowl rings. That's insane. So, we asked this morning a BYU-centric question. We liken it unto ourselves. Jason, who is the BYU football GOAT? I don't know how you're going to answer this question. I'm going to answer it with certain parameters. Let's hear it. I'm only answering this question based off of what they did at BYU. Okay. I'm not in, including anything that they did past BYU because that, then that changes. That, the, let's just declare that one. It's it, Steve. It's Steve. If you include yes. the NFL, he's the only yes. pro football Hall of Famer, period. Pro football Hall of Famer, Super Bowl MVP, like it, that, yes. that changes everything. Yes. Okay, if it's only BYU. Yes, if it's only BYU, okay. then for me, the GOAT is one Tyus James Detmer. And that is not his name. I just made that up. I don't know his middle name. <laughs> I don't know what it is either. I think it's Jamal. We actually need to look that up. Somebody look that up. Um, I'll use my okay, You do that machine. while I'm yeah. making my point. Ty Detmer Wiki. There, there are a lot of things. Hubert. Hubert. That's on brand. Okay. I like that's not, that. That's not bad. Um, Ty Detmer gets my vote for the greatest of all time. And look... His era, for me, and, and I, I, I want to say that I'm not saying this because of this reason. Ty Detmer was the reason that I was a BYU fan. That was the era that I became a BYU fan. That's when we moved to Utah, like, 89, 90. So that was right when mm. Ty Detmer was beginning his ascent to greatness. And so he will always have a a strong hold on my BYU fandom. But then the numbers back it up, too. Yeah. You're talking about the Heisman Trophy, mm -hmm. obviously. You're talking about 783 NCAA records that, in which he had. Okay, it's not that many. I was going to say, wait a minute, it wasn't that high. <laughs> but the guy rewrote yeah. the record books in terms of offense. And that's back when they were still writing yeah. the record books. Yes. Like they didn't type yes, it. Yes, on tablets, actually. Uh, so... <laughs> That's why, to me, he's yeah. the goat. If I'm going, if, if I'm going to give you my top three, it's, it's. I didn't ask for it, but go ahead. Okay, fine. Thank you. Thank you for indulging me. <laughs> you have Ty Detmer number one. You have Jim McMahon number two, and Steve Young number three. Yeah. Which is then funny, then, because we said then if you add the NFL, then Steve jumps up to number one. Oh yes. Of but yes, yeah, so that's mine. Is it's Ty Detmer, it's Jim McMahon, and then it's Steve Young. To me, Ty Detmer is the greatest BYU football quarterback of all time. I don't think there's a wrong answer here. And it's all defined by a specific season, by the way. Detmer's 90, Steve Young's 83, Jim McMahon's 80, and 81. Okay, um, there's no wrong answer here. If you tell me you, like you said, Ty, if you tell me it's Steve, based on BYU only, because remember, 83, BYU has its highest finished AP ranking, 7. They're 11-1. and one. He's second in the Heisman. That's one of the greatest seasons ever, right? He, he leads the country in... Uh, completion percentage, it was a BYU record until Zach Wilson broke it in 2020 um, and, and pass efficiency and all this. But for me, it's Jim McMahon's, uh, based on 80 and 81, it's Jim McMahon. I think because he did it first. I don't know how Alabama fans think, but I'm guessing they still think Joe Namath is the greatest quarterback to come out of Alabama. But he's sort of the Jim McMahon, if you will, at BYU because he did it first. And it's, Mark Wilson uh, had an incredible 79, first-round pick. But Wilson's 80, he just goes crazy. First quarterback to ever throw for 4,000 yards. Fifth in the Heisman. Led the country in pass yards, pass efficiency, yards played, touchdowns responsible for it. Da, 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 da. No one had done anything like that. And then what I think what happens is, you know, obviously Young stands on McMahon's shoulders to some degree. He gets second in the Heisman. Bosco stands on their shoulders and gets a national championship. And then Detmer a couple years later um, stands on Bob Lindsay's shoulders. I'm just kidding. Lindsay's shoulders. I'm kidding. And uh, wins the Heisman. Like, they, Ty has admitted, I needed them to do that to yeah. get to this spot. Right. So it's all synergistic in some way, which is kind of cool. And I've just stuck with Jim as, like, that 80 was just special. They did not count the bowl stats, by the way. Otherwise, he would have had, like, 5,000 yards passing in 80. Like, in 90 was crazy. Now 5,000 yards passing, like, happens, sure. right, in the modern era. But this was a different time. And McMahon, of course, goes on to the NFL, wins with 85 Bears, who have a a great defense, Walter Payton, and they have Jim McMahon, which is pretty cool. Although they didn't hand off to Walter Payton at the goal line. Anyway, let me add something to Jim's resume that's interesting. He also punted the ball. Like, he was the starting punter 
for two seasons. This is not a, a well-known fact among probably my generation. And, and our camera operator's like, what? The quarterback punted? He wasn't the starting quarterback in 77. And in 78, he split time with uh, Mark Wilson. He punted 96 times like he was the guy, 39-yard average. Like, just a fun little wrinkle into the McMahon conversation. And 83, we mentioned Young. Incredible. To me, these are the three inarguable top quarterbacks in BYU history. You then have a conversation after that that gets fun with the Mark Wilsons, the Max Halls, the Zach Wilsons, uh, the Robbie Boscos, of course, and, and many, many others. Like, you can throw Taysom Hill into that combo if you want to, like what he did on both sides of the ball. But how lucky are we that we have all these quarterbacks at BYU? It truly is QBU. Like, it's an unbelievable run of quarterbacks. And in the modern era now, it's fun to talk about Doman and Beck and Hall and, uh, and, and Hill and Wilson. And Wilson fits into this combo because of that special 2020. Well, and I, I love what you said about McMahon and – One of the reasons you used was because he was kind of the first one to begin this long line of not just great quarterbacks, but legendary quarterbacks in in college football. He took it to another level. Yeah, like it wasn't just that they were great. They were legendary quarterbacks. And that regardless of how much BYU football you're aware of, when you bring up certain names, everybody knows who they are, where they played, and those are the guys. It's Jim McMahon. It's Steve Young, Ty Detmer. Those guys will always have that surrounding them that they were legends in college. Yes, it's it's unbelievable. Yes, when you and, think about it. And I and I, I think Jim took it to another level. Sometimes, uh, like Lee Benson wrote a book, and it came to pass. Or sorry, and they came to pass, which is a great great name for a PYU quarterback book. I read that when I was younger and it starts with Gary Shetty. I wish it had started with Virgil Carter. I think Virgil starts it. Gary continues it. And then now we're off. Gifford Nielsen takes it to another yes. level. Mark Wilson takes it to another level. First round pick. Jim McMahon. Boom. Steve Young. Second in the Heisman. Would have been the number one overall pick in the NFL draft. He goes to the USFL, speaking of. And then uh, Robbie Bosco wins a natty. There's a couple years low. Ty Detmer, couple years. Steve Sarkeesian. Uh, let's just run through all the B, pl- B or A list, right? You could go after that. You could argue Federick's in that. Walsh, sorry, before that a little bit. And then you just keep going with, with Doman and the ones I mentioned. It's just like, are you serious? Like, BYU's been doing what college, college football finally caught up. Because it used to be like the running back was the guy yeah. and the middle linebacker. It's quarterback, man. He's been running this business model since the 70s. That's why I'm excited about what we're seeing now. Because, you know, you had Taysom a couple of years ago. and The most unique quarterback. Like, the BYU, yes. He, he, he was like he was, uh, he was, a bigger Steve Young. Yes, he was like Steve Young, but he took that he was to Lu- another he because was of Luke his Staley size. He was Luke and Steve yes. Young together. Yes. Right-handed. Yes, you're, you're, <laughs> like crazy. you're 100% right. But that's what makes nowadays fun because of after having Zach and Jaron Hall, who is another quarterback that could be in the National Football League, you know, and Jacob Conover was a highly touted you know, recruit coming in, and there's still high hopes for what he can do in this program. So you're now you, – this this legacy of quarterbacks continues to this day, and that's what makes it fun to be a BYU fan, certainly when you're talking about the the highest profile position in all sports, being a quarterback. Absolutely. Our question of the day, who's the BYU football GOAT? The greatest of all time, of course. GOAT used to be, you know, it was your fault the bad thing happened. Then it just became the the acronym, and here we are. (laughs) Let's go to Voice of the Nation. This is the Voice of the Nation on BYU Sports Nation. Weigh in on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. The following name is perhaps one of the greatest Utah names of all time. Ammon Malone. I love that. Lavelle Edwards. The stadium wasn't named after any other player or coach. When you think BYU football, you think of him. Now, that's an interesting conversation. I did, Do you I just did go think right it. to Lavelle? I did think about it, but I was going strictly player. on the field as a player. Yes. But if, if Lavelle's in the convo, it's Lavelle. Not, none of this happens without Lavelle. None, yes. Literally nothing that we just talked about and rambled on for 10 minutes <laughs> Has anything to do with anything if Rambles. LaBelle's not here? Speak for yourself. Uh, uh, another response. Johnny Linehan on Twitter. Me. You know what? Johnny, get the heck out of here, man. I love you, Johnny. But no. Come on, man. 
Um, yeah, Johnny tweeted when Boise State, um, you know, commented about, hey, it sounds like we're not playing after mm-hmm. going after the Big 12 very much, um, if at all. Uh, Johnny said, uh, I, I vote that we strike from the record all the uh, games and results and just plays. Just completely and erase them. It never happened. You know, we haven't talked about this part uh, just real quick, but you know how we we made a big deal out of Boise. We blew up Boise State's 2019, you know, G5 access yep. to the New Year's Six. Well, the, the yeah, Navy paid the probably favor. blew it up last year. <laughs> yes. right? it, it I don't know if there's a maybe. <laughs> I don't think you can take maybe out of it. Well, I just wonder if one last BYU is ahead of some of the at-large. Like, is BYU a New Year's Six at-large with only one loss? <sighs> I'd hope so, but anyway. All right, coming up, does Kalani Satake need to step up his Twitter game? Oh, shoot. And radio analyst Riley Nelson joins us next to discuss his BYU GOAT and what's his criteria. This is BYU Sports Nation. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by BYU Food to Go, the MVP of your next event. Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork sells Ford vehicles, including the F-150, the pickup designed for work and play. Tim Daly Ford maintains a large inventory, providing more choices for selecting an F-150 with the power and engineering to carry and tow heavy loads. The F-150's design offers comfort, safety, and a range of options to choose from. Think Ford. Think Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork. Dexter & Dexter is a full-service law firm offering a wide range of legal services. Since 1995, we have helped more than 20,000 Utahns both to navigate life's challenges and to make the most of life's opportunities. From accidents to wills, from bankruptcy to business law, we are passionate about shouldering your burdens. To learn more about scheduling a no-obligation consultation, visit DexterLaw.com. There's nothing quite like doing a live sketch. Having the audience like nearby is really, really neat to just be able to connect with them and hopefully make their day better. When you are doing a sketch and you hear your first laugh, it's just like, here we go, let's go for it. I mean, one of the most rewarding things is having people saying like, I I struggle with this or this, and you guys are able to make me laugh at it and realize like I'm not the only person going through those things. Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Join us tonight for BYU basketball with Mark Pope as the coach and Greg Rubel look ahead to a very big week for BYU basketball with games at home against San Francisco and second ranked Gonzaga. Don't call us Gonzaga. It's tonight, 8 30 Eastern on the BYU TV app. It's not the Zogs? not the Zogs, despite a lot of people it's, saying it that way. It's, it's uh, you know, it's the other pandemic out there. Uh, <laughs> the inability to pronounce Gonzaga. Okay, we're uh, in Studio B, Jerem Jordan alongside Jason Shepard. You heard our answers on the GOAT in BYU football. Let's get the answer of Riley Nelson, BYU radio analyst, former BYU quarterback himself. Riley, I wish the answer was you. Sadly, it is not. But who is your GOAT in BYU football history? Yeah, here's how I absolved myself from that uh, from that conversation is, <laughs> no, hey, I, I, disclaimer, I do not believe in an all-time because I believe that sports evolve so much over that it has to be the greatest of an era. Now, that said, I will, you know, play into your guys' little exercise. Um, <laughs> What's little about it? Why are you minimizing our show, Riley? It's got to be it's got to be Ty Detmer for me, Uh, you know, multiple consensus All-American retired with not just BYU records, but national records that still stand some of which still stand to this day. Of course, the pinnacle individual achievement um, in the Heisman Trophy. And even though he wasn't able to, you know, capture national championship, the you know, you look at best wins that Miami win. and, And of course, BYU was was uber successful. My 
My second would be Jim McMahon. And keep in mind, my criteria is what was done at BYU. Whatever happens beyond, to me, is uh, some people, and, and that's fine. They can take that as part of their evaluation criteria, um, but it doesn't for me. If we want to have a different discussion of who's the greatest pro to come out of BYU, then the list mixes up a little bit. But for me, it's Ty Detmer 1, Jim McMahon 2. You're a very smart man, Riley. I'm just uh, I'm just going to say that. Uh, so, okay, so let's go then the, the greatest non-QB GOAT. So if we're taking the QBs out of it and we're opening it up wide open to everybody that's come through, who do you think is the GOAT for BYU football? So for me, um, well, here – Two big uh, evaluation criteria for me are consensus All-American and then an individual award, uh, you know, winning that. So, like, Jason Buck comes to mind. Um, of course, he was a multi-all-conference uh, player and then the Outland Trophy winner and a consensus All-American. Gordon Hudson was a two-time consensus All-American. Um, I, I started thinking about running backs, and that, that really – the. What about the 2000s from running backs to go from Luke Steady, then Curtis Brown became the all-time leading rusher, then Harvey Unger right after him, and then Jamal right after him, and then we just got done with Tyler Algiers. I mean, all that in succession. So those guys kind of almost, because of the greatness as a whole, they almost kind of like battle each other down, uh, like, you know, um, two candidates in a political race that are stealing votes from each other. But uh, non, and then you look at wide receivers, of course, you got to throw Austin Holly in there, Collie in there, the guy who I played with, Cody Hoffman, still atop the all-time leader uh, board in in ca those categories and all those things. If you had to, and then uh, going back to the defensive side of the ball, even though there wasn't consensus All-American or Outland Trophy, it's hard to argue against not only the numbers and production that Kyle Van Vanoy produced, but the sheer level of excitement that he brought to the game. Like people would tune, it's rare that you tune in to watch a defensive player, but when Kyle Vanoy was here at BYU, that was most definitely the case. So um, on that one, maybe giving a little bit more deference to history and that, and that consensus all American uh, offensively uh, Gordon Hudson defensively, probably Jason Buck. And those are great picks. I think if the Mackey Award exists when Gordon Hudson plays, he wins it. He might have won it twice. <laughs> like, we've talked about that 83 team on the show. Like, he doesn't even play the whole season, and he's still a consensus All-American. Like, the respect that Gordon Hudson garnered was incredible. So, okay, let's talk about the current BYU team now. Jaron Hall had a tremendous 2021 season. Cam Miller's coming out and saying, hey, he thinks he's first-round potential. We've talked with you on the show about that. So if that were to actually happen, what would have to happen this season for Jaron to merit such uh, a claim for a potential first round pick in the future? He has to have two or three games where they almost win. They win because of him or like, let's say the defense just is a sieve, right? Let's say that he's getting pressured all over the place, but like you, but somehow BYU still pulls it out and it's because Basically, he put the team on his back. To me, that's what I want to see from Jaron Hall to to really truly validate him as as uh, great because he's he's got great numbers. Uh, he's an incredibly good leader and decision maker and all those things. But yet, what I'm yet to see from him is put the team on his back and deliver a win. I think there's been instances in in losses where he's put like you look at his numbers in the Baylor game. It was great, but you need numbers and you need the end result and the most important stat, which is getting the win. So for me, and, and I'm not an NFL scout, I'm not an NFL evaluator, uh, but for me, uh, as far as other guys watching college football and being a fan of college football for the last 20 years, uh, Andrew Luck put guys on his back. Russell Wilson put guys on his back, you know, or, or put his team on his back. Even more recently, Trevor Lawrence, you know, put Clemson on his back at times. And and that's what I we've seen flashes of, but I haven't seen that, like, signature game, that signature win, signature put the team on his back from Jaron Hall. You know, Riley, there are so many factors that go into how somebody is viewed. And, you know, for, for one of them, it, it could be who you follow. And Jaron Hall is following Zach Wilson, who had an unbelievable final year in Provo and is the number two pick overall. Um, I thought Jaron was amazing last year. Do you think Jaron Hall is underappreciated? That's a good question. Um, no, 
I, I don't think so because I've seen a ton of appreciation for him. I don't think he has a lot of detractors. I think you might be answering this question. I mean, I don't I don't want to um, guess at the motives of your question, but I know that this was out there a little bit in, in some fan blog. The fact that BYU was actively going after Jackson Dart, uh, the former USC QB who entered the transfer portal, ended up committing to Ole Miss. I think people saw that as a slight to – uh, as a slight to Jaron, it's not. You got to understand that these coaches had their livelihoods on the line. And rule number one of success, like look at college football. Why is it Alabama? Why is it always Georgia, Ohio State, Clemson? Why is it all these same teams? Because in to a large degree, they have a monopoly on talent. And so the bottom line is talent wins. As much as you know, there you like scheme and you like coaches and their ability to create culture and motivate. The reality is if you've got players and if you've got a lot of them, you're going to increase your likelihood for success as a team. So it, it is incumbent upon every coach, the, both the head coach, coordinators and, and position coaches at BYU, whenever they have a shot and going out and getting talent, even if talent already exists within the program, they have to do it. So anybody who took BYU's recruitment of Jackson Dart or any other, you know, quarterback, um, as a slide against Jaron Hall, I, let me, that is not the case. And then I would say generally he, he is appreciated. Here's another couple things that may add to that perception. Aaron Roderick provides a very quarterback friendly system. He's a lot like Kyle Shanahan or, you know, the LaFleurs or McVay to where their system is almost such that it's, it's plug and play. But that said, Jaron's still got to be the one pulling the triggers, making the decisions. He, he's done an absolutely uh, great job at that. And then the second thing is when you're handing the ball off to Tyler Algier and you got guys like Puka Nakua, Gunnar Romney, Neil Powell on the outside, it feels like, you know, a lot of the pressure is taken off you. But again, going back, he's still got to make the right run checks to have Tyler be successful. He's still got to, you know, give those guys a chance to make plays. And he's still got to, you know, put them, put the offense as a whole as a position win, all of which he has done. So um, uh, I would... I don't get the sense that he's grossly underappreciated. He might be by some individuals, but I'd say on the whole, he's he's well-liked and well-appreciated, and that's well-deserved. And it feels like he'll have more on his plate next year with no Tyler Algier. Christopher Brooks, we hope, was certainly a thousand-yard guy and really good, but what we saw from Tyler Algier was uh, was unique, was special. It had never been done in BYU history. Now we look to the backup. If uh, Baylor Romney is indeed not going to return to BYU, that is a possibility apparently, but it sounds like and looks like he's going to move on. How do you feel about Jacob Conover as the backup, given the little that we've seen him play against Utah State? Yeah, such a small sample size and, you know, getting your first snaps on the road in a hostile environment and and really not with, with going in with a lead like that in the second half, not being asked to do much. Um, it's just, it's it's hard psyche. It was a great experience, in my opinion, for Jacob to, to get those first uh, snaps because he's going to be able to look on that experience and realize, you know what, like, don't play to because where you're in a position to to not lose as opposed to go out and make a win. I'll, I'll use myself as an example, right? That Utah State game, my junior year being thrown in, it was like we had nothing to lose. So I could go out and play free and make because we were already down, you know, 11 points or whatever it was late in the third quarter. So I could go out and play free wheeling. It would have been a different story when you're putting the game, say, you know, down 11. Um, or up 11 and the other team has momentum and you got to hold on. So he'll learn a lot from that, but he's a, he's a guy uh, by all accounts um, that I hear from other guys within the program. And then also knowing Jake a little bit myself, uh, he, he, as the kids say, he wants that smoke. He he's waiting anxiously for his opportunity. Um, and he's, he's a tireless worker. His teammates, you know, think highly of him. They respect him as, as a leader and, and um he's waiting for his opportunity i i personally feel good uh, or well i guess i should say this i feel as good as you can for a guy that has what maybe eight or nine uh pass attempts in his career let's stay with the offense and i'm curious your take on expectations for this offense next year because obviously you know as jaron mentioned you don't have tyler Ajir. you know you have a couple of receivers that that have they're moving on but there's still a lot of talent here. You still have Jaron Hall. To your point that you mentioned, you know, Aaron Rodgers now been uh, here at BYU for several seasons, and things have been implemented that guys should be able to hit the ground running or passing, depending on what they decide to do. Uh, what are your realistic expectations for this offense next year? 
For me, it all starts with the offensive line. Obviously, getting the five-star transfer into the program uh, helps build up your depth there. And how many injuries that unit, that position group, experienced over the course of last last season and yet held up, right? They they passed the test of depth. And so you get all those guys back. Of course, you know, you've got Empey, who was kind of at both being the, sen- the center and the senior statesman. Uh, of that position group and that offensive line, you can't understate uh, the the task that will be the person that steps into that center position. But you feel like you've got, you know, those eight or nine bodies that, with enough talent to be successful. Uh, replacing Tyler Algier will be the biggest one. Obviously, you know, hopefully Brooks can turn out to be a Tyson Williams. Uh, who, there was a lot of great success. Obviously, we all know the unfortunate season ending injury that he had, but he's gone on to prove that he was an NFL caliber talent. And hopefully Brooks is the same as well as the other guys that, that remain right. Katoa's coming back again and you, you got McChesney there and there was excitement coming out of fall camp and a guy like Hinkley Rapati and some other guys um, that are chomping at the bit to, to prove their worth. So, and then I, I think tight ends and uh, obviously Isaac Rex uh, wish him the best coming back from what seemed to be a really uh, complicated and gruesome injury, but there's other tight ends that made plays over the course of the season. So the biggest question for me starts with the, the dudes up front and then whoever's toting the rock in the backfield. And if those guys can, I mentioned Roderick and kind of having a Shanahan esque uh, offensive line. Well, we all know that that starts with establishing the run and then you get play action, play action shots and, and your drop back. Everything is a, is a byproduct of your ability to be successful in establishing the run. So if if those guys come back, if that if, if the five up front can uh, you know hit the ground running, and then that back can do work behind them, obviously we know what Jaron and a lot of the guys on the outside can do. So I wouldn't expect much of a drop off going from last year to this. Can't wait for it. Cannot wait for that O line to be pancaking fools coming up in September. It's going to be awesome, Riley. We appreciate the time, man. Thanks, fellas. Thanks, Riley, Riley. Riley Nelson, radio analyst for BYU Radio, dropping some knowledge here. Look, and now that it's officially February 1st, there's spring football this month. <laughs> wow, that's right. Let's go. Spring football is this month. That's very exciting. Let's uh, Football, man, year round. This is a volleyball school, but I'm very excited about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, look, and the pros are trying to do you know, the USFL's coming back. Oh, get out of here with that. Is the XFL coming back? <clears throat> Who cares? Vince McMahon. You don't think is he bringing anyone, that one back? No one cares about the USFL and XFL. What is this, a documentary, 30 for 30? <laughs> By the way, the XFL, they're all great. The XFL one was really, really good. This is the X, yeah, so good. Yeah. Because it's funny. Yes, yes. It's one of those moments in time that you know happened, but yeah. yet when you look back, wow, that really did happen. We're still trying to do it. <laughs> yeah. We being society, not me. Yeah. yeah. All right, coming up, we take a look at uh, BYU Hoops resume. We get the update. Get your LinkedIn ready. Lenardi, bubbly. Uh, women's hoops hold steady in the polls. What can they do to climb? It doesn't seem like there's a ton besides just win and hope, but we'll discuss this is BYU Sports Nation. such a difference in our lives, I think really helped mold us as to as to who we are. And so when we had that opportunity and, and came back to Boise and found out there was an active chapter, we thought, okay, that's something that I can really get behind and get involved in. We want to promote the BYU experience all over the, the, the region. We want people who leave BYU to still stay connected. Trio Orem Senior Living believes in empowering seniors to live life to the fullest. We help eliminate stress out of daily life when you live at Trio. Less time focusing on housework means you can socialize at one of our many events with safety in mind, of course. And did we mention our spacious apartments with modern amenities? Learn more about setting up a private tour at TrioOrem.com. 
When we sit down to watch TV, it's a fun way to unite your family, be entertained, and to watch what's on BYU TV. Brings our family together. We all love BYU TV. If you're watching it with the family, you, you will have a good time and you can reconnect and you can bond with your family and have a better relationship with them. All of us together. BYU Sports Nation is brought to you by Marisk, enabling global trade for a growing world. Friday, ninth-ranked BYU men's volleyball hosting 10th-ranked Ball State at the Smith Fieldhouse. Watch the match live on BYU TV and the app beginning at 9. The fifth, Avide Gardini returns after an ankle sprain Friday night. And uh, Mix Ramones, how about him? 45 kills in two matches last week for the Retro Freshman. He is Jason. I am Jerem. This is BYU Sports Nation. You can follow BYU Sports Nation on the Internet via your Netscape browser or others. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. Do you think there's anyone still using Netscape? Can you use Netscape? I don't even know. I don't Does know. Is that the one that came in the mail? That you get AOL. like a disc? AOL. AOL. Okay, yeah. yeah. At Juno.com. Let's whip it. Cougar Whip Round is presented by Marisk, your integrated container logistics company enabling global trade for a growing world. There's so many youngsters right now going, what are they talking about? Do you, okay, camera, camera homies here. Do you know what Netscape is? No clue. Okay. No clue. No Zero clue. Okay. acknowledgement of <laughs> knowing what we're talking about. Ow! It sucks to be old now. All right. BYU does not climb in the rankings, and we're not in the committee's top 16. Yep. This is the women's team that we're talking yep. about. Yep. What does the BYU women's basketball team need to do to actually get some national respect? I think they're getting respect. It's just not the amount we want, right? Because or I think that they deserve top 10 net. Who cares, right? Uh, the rankings is certainly nice, validating. It doesn't matter to the selection committee at the end of the day. Um, but this just in during the conversation um, of the show, NCAA March Madness WBB, the official count, right? NCAA Team of the Week, Women's Hoops. Um, Charlie Cream has them as a five still. Maybe that's where we're, we're, our bread is not being cluttered to the degree we want is the seed, right? Why, why is BYU top four? Why not? You know what BYU needs to do? Get in a Power yes. 5 league, yeah. which they're doing. That's exactly what my answer was going to be. Hurry up and get into the Big 12 because what's going to continue to hurt yep. this team is the teams remaining on the schedule. You do have Gonzaga, which that's going to help. You, you Look, you've got some good teams, but it's not going to be anybody that the committee is going to look at and want to give you the benefit of the doubt. Even though BYU yes. is going to win these games by like 40. Yes. By the way, here's a stat for you. Drop yeah. this on the broadcast on Saturday. Sure. So BYU has 18 wins. They're 18 and 1 overall. Yes. Of their 18 wins, three victories have come by single digits. They're Only blowing three. Everybody they out. are blowing and everybody then, out. And then the one loss is single digits. So four out of 19. Out of games? 19. That's incredible. It's unbelievable. Okay, uh, by the way, you totally knew what Netscape was. I think you were faking it. I know what in Netscape the latest, is, but yeah. I just couldn't remember if that was the one that came in the in the di on, on the disc. <sighs> I don't know. Man. In the latest Big Game Boober rankings, BYU is not represented in the top 50 best head coaches to follow on Twitter. Does Kalani need to step up his Twitter game? Uh, sure. It only, only the only reason I say that is because I I'd like to hear more from him on Twitter. Yeah. The guy's funny. Is, He's energetic. We Kalani's get to select. see. We, need, we want the same energy running up and down the sidelines after touchdowns. I want that on the Twitter. Here's the thing. Kalani comes from the school of Kyle Whittingham sometimes, where he just, like, keeps it low-key sometimes. I thought he went to BYU. He did, and so did Kyle. Uh, but, like, Kalani doesn't always let his full personality on display. He does on the sidelines when BYU gets turned over or whatever. But he wants to keep it chill sometimes. I can respect that, but I'm with you. I would like... Uh, him to be uh, a little higher on this list. No Although surprise, this Lane list doesn't one. matter <laughs> because you know who isn't on this list? Nick Saban, national champion. Is there? Is Nick Saban ever tweeted? Does he even have an account? I have no idea. I, I don't know either. I don't. Know. I don't know. All right. Sorry, Georgia. Georgia won the national championship, but Alabama is always there. He, yeah. Whatever. All just, right. Just win. Just win. Thank you, Al Davis. BYU Baseball tweeted out photos of the beginning steps of the process uh, as they install a brand new video board Ooh. at Miller Park. Very, very excited. I know they are. They can't wait for this. Uh, uh, was Shia LaBeouf there running this, digging at all? No? <laughs> no. Holes? Holes. No. no. 
Yes. Good move. Uh, the hope is that it's ready for when there are actual home games coming up in a little over a month. Should Football, the, was it? Here's the thing. I want to make it perfectly clear. I did not write this question, okay? This is not a self-serving question, okay? <laughs> it does utilize me in it, however. Jason at AOL.com. So for the team that may be watching this, when I come to practice later today, I don't need to hear that I wrote this question specifically for me. <laughs> Should I be the first shot on the board? <laughs> you can put it on the board. Uh, yes. Jason Shepard should be the first shot that goes on the video board. Again, I did not write that. I, I did not write this question. I li I love it. Um, yeah. Saban does not have a Twitter. Our uh, research staff has told us. Well AKA done. Our or he's producer. just blocked our account. We can't see it. <sighs> Dang it. Today is Chinese New Year. Happy New Year, everybody that celebrates that and marks the beginning of the Year of the Tiger. Congratulations to your BYU Tigers. So does that actually mean it's the year of the Cougar? I think it does. It clearly means this is going to be an unbelievable year. It is BYU's year. It's the year of the Cougar. It's going to be hard to beat 21-22. Uh, <laughs> the greatest season in BYU sports history. Look, the last two, combined, the last the two seasons have been unbelievable. Look, BYU, BYU look, has navigated this. You go 11 this. and 1. Yes. You have the number two overall pick. Our audience knows. You preach to the choir. You win the Pac-12 conference this last year. The whole year. thing, not just the division. The whole thing. You win it. You own it. Christopher Brooks wanted to join a Pac-12 champ. He's like, I'm going to the real Pac-12 team. Yep. Uh, it's it's the last two years with football have been awesome. Yeah. You, oh, I, we buried the lead. You beat Utah. Oh, yeah, that. That was fun. Which was, again, part of the Pac-12. But that kind of takes a, a step up. Yeah. Yeah, it is. I, and I think, you joined the Big 12. How, we really missed the lead. I don't think it can get much better than this year, honestly. Like, just enjoy this. I hope it does. But I'm talking combined, all sports, single year, amazing. It's incredible, man. It is. It's Hopefully BYU can keep it going. BYU finally used its food, food storage, if you will. There was an issue, a pandemic. Mm -hmm. How are we going to respond? Are we not going to jump into this and, and figure it out? Or are we going to do our best and do something? BYU did. Thrive, man. Not just survived, thrive. So are you telling me that the last two seasons are comparable to, like, powdered potatoes? <laughs> when you needed them, they were, no, it's more like uh, the Oreos you actually put in the food storage. They not just never the last bland. long. Like, any of they that. They never last because you eat them. That's what I'm saying. Not you, because they don't, don't last. Put them you are in the going food to eat storage. them. Because it, you know there's no way in the world those are lasting. The control room's like, get to break. Enough food storage talk. <laughs> All right, coming know up. Know your audience. Yeah. Who are the top five quarterback goats in BYU football history? And who are the top five worst? Not just kidding. Uh, who is your BYU goat? More of your responses coming up after the break. Oh, there's mine. Jim McMahon. Touchdown. Although, if they would have reviewed that, that's no touchdown. Can I get some Oreos and milk? When my grandfather started this company in 1947, he couldn't have envisioned what we would ultimately become. We realized that our value to our customers is that we will be there day after day, year after year, doing whatever we need to to find solutions to the challenges that they face. We are committed to be honestly better in all that we do, in every opportunity that we have to serve our customers. Hi, Spencer Linton here letting you know when your company joins the BYU team as a corporate partner, your brand can be featured in sports programming on BYU TV and BYU Radio. In addition to all of the great games, you can be part of the BYU Coaches Shows, place your message in Countdown to Kickoff, basketball pre- and post-game shows, and each weekday on BYU Sports Nation. We invite your team to join ours and become a corporate sponsor of BYU Athletics. For details, email sponsorship at byu.edu today. If I got hurt and was laid up at home, I wouldn't even think to call a lawyer. What a hassle. I'd want to meet them first. What if I told you that for your first consultation, your lawyer will come to you, home or hospital? Really? Really. They do that? If you've been injured, we'll come to you. It's your job to get better. It's our job to deal with the insurance companies. Learn more at SiegfriedandJensen.com.
Every day, I help an animal walk again. I believe that having special needs animals has brought an extra layer of richness to the fabric of our family. Not many people take in these special needs guys, but in the end, they're the best ones. It's unbelievable. It's like his disability has disappeared. Every step just proves to me that these dogs can get through anything. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. On the latest BYUSN right now, Kiki's helping you celebrate the highs of our Cougs' career highs, and yes, helping deal with the lows of a loss. Check it out on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter. I'm lost in a minute. We're like, oh no, we love that. A Q4 stinks, I get it. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation live from Studio B. Okay, it's time for the resume update with BYU Hoops after losing the St. Clair Pacific. How bad is it on Tuesday, February 1st? Net down one to 34. Still good. 34 is good. Ken Palm, 28. Held steady. Bracketology is where it's interesting with Joe Lenardi. From an 8 to a 9, but not just that, BYU's out of the green, if you will. The 80-plus percent chance to make the tourney. BYU's the first team out of that, not they're not out of the tournament, but they're now, what we would say, on the, on bubble, the bubble. Meaning, there's a chance you're not in. Um, so BYU's got, got to do some work here, right, in the last uh, seven games here. Team rankings, up 2% to make the tourney, up 54%. Bracket Matrix, 8.36. Rothstein's still 33. So you're still in a tourney position, Jason. The concern is, you've got to beat San Francisco Thursday night. You don't have to beat Gonzaga Saturday, of course. And then you got to hold serve against LMU and Pepperdine twice. And then the game big, at the game, game at St. Mary's. That's that's the one big game at St. Mary's. That's where BYU is going to be able to say whether or not they have a legit chance at getting back to number two in the conference standings and getting that double bye yep. down in Vegas or not like San Francisco. This week is massive. You've got to win Thursday night against San Francisco. Can I make an argument for why a three seed wouldn't be terrible? Okay, please. Um, you'd probably get a quad two game in again. So let's say let's say Santa Clara's the five. Is that a reasonable projection here? San Diego's pretty good right now, but yeah. they, haven't, they haven't played a lot of the top teams quite yet. I think they're going to fall to the six. So the top four are obvious, right? And then Santa Clara's the five. If you're, if, if you're the – well, I guess if you're the three, maybe you're playing the six, um, you know. Potentially, so maybe that doesn't work out. But if you're the three or four, if you're the four, you don't want to meet Gonzaga in the semi. BYU's got to be a two or three. Um, and if, like, St. Mary's is a tourney team or San Francisco is a tourney team and they are, let's say, the two, and it is going to be a three-bid league. We don't know that. Maybe that maybe that uh, quarterfinal is a quad two. But if it's a quad three, now it's a waste of time. So, obviously, you'd want to get the two, but I think being the three won't be the worst thing in the world. No, I mean, it's not the worst thing in the world, but I, I think you're going into it with the idea that the goal is to get back to the number two spot. You want to get, bubble. you yeah. want to get that by into the Monday game. Yes. Like, which like, will then be a quad. Uh, we hope one. Yes. Game. So I, I think you're going to get as, you're going to get as much, if not more of a bump playing a better team on Monday than you would being a three. You can have both is what I'm saying. I understand. Is, but yeah, I, but yeah. I also think that you're also pushing the envelope a little, just, just get to Monday. But if don't, you don't it, open something up to where some you have one of these weird, weird games. This team isn't the quarterfinal loss team to San Diego that happened twice. No, I, I agree they're not. not but I I'm, just think you you don't don't mess with it. Just get back to number two, go to Monday. But but, but it all but hinges on might, San Francisco and then certainly winning at St. Mary's. You might have to mess with it because the league's better. Like it's not automatic that BYU is going to be the two. So there's a reasonable chance that BYU is the three. If BYU is the four, they're in trouble. If you're always the four, they're really on the bubble, like last eight in to the tourney kind of situation. Um, the league is better, but I don't believe it'll be a four-bid league. I think one of the teams will knock one of the others out of the NCAA. And that makes perfect sense. Maybe in Vegas. Like, yeah. that, that semifinal of the 2-3 might be the get into the NCAA tournament or not game. It, it's going to be a huge game that Monday night. So we'll we'll see what BYU's at. Um, our, uh, you know, that's our resume update. Uh, continue to weigh in. We'll get to the elite voice coming up. In just a second. All right. I know we haven't talked a whole lot about it today, uh, but coming up, our rising shout outs to the GOAT. To the GOAT. And top five Tuesday. Ooh, top five Tuesday. The top five quarterbacks in BYU history. Who do we have as number one? Who's number five? Let's check it out. This is BYU Sports Nation. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Delta Airlines. Keep climbing.
BYU Food To Go's convenient location at 2191 North Canyon Road in Provo makes bringing popular BYU foods to your next event easy. Everything's ready when you need it at the drive and load pickup. You drive in and they load no matter the weather. And stop in the on-site creamery for great BYU chocolate milk and ice cream. BYU Food To Go, bringing campus to your table. Call for details, 801-422-5001. I'm Kieran Stone and I'm a contractor. We find communities in need and work with them to forge better futures. It's not about us, it's about us connecting with everybody there and helping the community and working with them. There are so many communities that need help. When you think you can't make a difference, you are making more of a difference than you could ever dream or ever imagine. They're all incredible projects to be a part of and I'm so grateful to be a part of The Fixers. There are things happening in Seaburg. They care more about people spending money than they do about people getting sick. If they're causing toxic pollution, it is everyone's fight. We can't just let them get away with it. If anyone can figure this out, it's my brother. Friends don't abandon each other. Fine, be heroes. I know what it's like to love someone so much you'd do anything for them. Whatever happens, I'm glad we're facing it together. Me too. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. BYU Sports Nation is always available on demand via the free BYU TV and BYU Radio app. Don't forget, subscribe, rate, and review after you download the podcast. All you need to do is search BYU Sports Nation podcast on Google. Time for this week's Top 5 Tuesday presented by Delta Airlines. With the retirement of the NFL QB GOAT, just NFL GOAT, just of any point, Tom Brady, we give you the top five BYU QB GOATs. Let's go. At number five, Zach Wilson, youngest starting quarterback in BYU history, went 19 and 9 in his career as a starter, including 11 and 1 his junior year. Single season record holder for a completion percentage in BYU history. He was an All American, totaling Almost 3,700 passing yards, 33 touchdowns with only three interceptions. What an unbelievable stat. And as we all know, the number two overall pick to the New York Jets, the highest draft pick in BYU history. Ten rushing touchdowns, too. So he was plus 40 in the touchdown to turnover ratio. <laughs> That's insane. Number four, Robbie Bosco, two-year starter at BYU, totaled 8,400 yards. 66 touchdown passes led BYU to a national championship as a junior, 10 and 3 record as a senior, 85, 23 and 3 as a starter. How about that? Third in the Heisman, second team All American as senior year, drafted in the third round by the Packers. Number three, Steve Young. Young set a total of 13 NCAA records during his career. He was the starter for the Cougars in 82 and 83, totaling 7,700 plus passing yards and 56 touchdowns to go along with over 1,000 career rushing yards and 18 touchdowns. He was truly the dual threat quarterback. He was the 83 Davy O'Brien Award winner and Heisman Trophy runner up while being named a first team All American. He is in both the College Football and the Pro Football Hall of Fame. He is also a Super Bowl MVP. In that 83 uh, uh, Holiday Bowl. Caught, rushed, and passed for a touchdown the same game. Not Pretty bad. Crazy. Number two, Jim McMahon. Broke 70 NCAA records during his BYU career. Threw for almost 10,000 yards, 84 touchdowns. First team All-American. Co-offensive NCAA Player of the Year. Won the inaugural Davy O'Brien in 81, as well as the Sam, Sammy Bott Trophy. Third in the Heisman. Uh, fifth one year as well. Threw the uh, Hail Mary, of course, in the Miracle Bowl. Also, uh, you know, called off the punt team with some uh, expletives to keep that comeback alive. <laughs> Member of the College Football Hall of Fame, the BYU Hall of Fame. And of course, won a Super Bowl in 85 with the Bears. It was the 86 Super Bowl, but it was the 85, 85 season. season. That is correct. And number one goes 
to Ty Detmer. Over 15,000 career passing yards and 121 career passing touchdowns, both most in BYU history by a mile. Won the Heisman in 1990. We all remember that. BYU's only Heisman Trophy winner. He was a two-time Davey O'Brien winner in 90 and 91. He's the only BYU quarterback to throw for over 5,000 yards in one season. He did that in 90. He broke 59 NCAA records during his career. He's still fifth all-time in NCAA history in career passing That's yards. That's amazing. And eighth in passing touchdowns. He's Bill. a member of the College Football Hall of Fame, and he did play 13 seasons in the NFL. I want to point out two things with Ty. One, the NFL stuff. Now, he didn't start a ton, right? Although he did for a while with the Eagles. He was sort of Michael Vick's, uh, the third string quarterback on that team. He was kind of a quarterback He coach was a quarterback today. coach everywhere he went. Influential, right? Um, the other thing is this. Lavelle Edwards t tells the fun story of when Ty Dummer showed up on campus. He thought that he had recruited Pee Wee Herman. So, not bad. What was that? That Green Bay team had <laughs> had Detmer, Kurt Warner, or no. Was Bosco on it? No, no, no. I'm talking about uh, in, in Favre, oh, in right? Favre. All on the roster? Yes. Or was it uh, Brunel as well? Brett Fa I don't remember, but Brett Favre one time said that he didn't know what cover two was one time and tied yeah, it yeah. explained to him. Yeah. It's unbelievable. <laughs> From southern Mississippi, right? It's unbelievable. Jamal? Our question of the day. Who is the BYU football GOAT? Let's get to some uh, response here. At Roberts underscore MN. Jim McMahon had that killer instinct. BYU gained possession of the ball anywhere inside the 50. You knew he was going to take uh, an end zone shot on first down, 10-yard holding penalty. No problem. He'd throw it for 20 on the next down. That's awesome. Uh, and, and if they had to punt, he would just punt it. Uh, Josh Bretzing on Instagram. As of now, anyone other than Steve Young is wrong. Well, that's an opinion-based question. I'm going to assume he's putting in his NFL career. Yeah, if, and again. And again, that, whatever your criteria 100%. is, that's fine. Kevin Kelly, Facebook. Steve Young has said that Jim McMahon's the best. Who am I to argue with him? Nobody, I guess, but Ty, Ty did win the Hazard. Arthur Maxwell, Facebook. Jason Buck, okay. When he played, the defensive line led the team in tackles. Outland Trophy winner on the defensive line. BYU also has an offensive lineman who is an Outland Trophy winner, and Mohamed Elouanibi, uh, which is pretty cool. It's the interior... You know, lineman. Award. I think Jason Buck is the best defensive player BYU's ever had. Hard to argue that. Yeah, I think I think Jason that. Buck is the goat on the defensive side of the football for BYU. Hundred year anniversary coming up here in uh, twenty two. What do you say we put together some lists? Some more lists. We huh? love a list. Who doesn't like a list? In response, our elite voice of the day, presented by Sundance Mountain Resort at CL underscore Living, Tyson McYoung. Go ahead and retire number one four one nine eight. I like that. Combine all of them. Let's go. Today's Rise and Shout Out is presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. Um, look, let's give it to Tom Brady. 22 years in the NFL, mid-40s, still playing at a high level, seven Super Bowl victories. He is the greatest quarterback of all time. He's the greatest to ever do it. So uh, a Rise and Shout Out to one Thomas Brady. That's pretty gnarly, dude. Uh, New York with a petty and vindictive tweet. Uh, NBC New York. Tom Brady, who lost two Super Bowls to the Giants during his legendary 22-year NFL career, retires to see his full message here. <laughs> and then Philadelphia Fox 29 Philly. Tom Brady, known for dropping a pass in Super Bowl 52, <laughs> failing to shake Nick Foles' hands as an answer to retirement. That's some petty and vindictive stuff right there. Uh, that's some stuff. That's some good stuff, though. That <laughs> is me, man. Our thanks to today's guest, Riley No. Conversation continues 24-7 on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Always use hashtag BYUSN. For Jason, I'm Jerem. Shout out to Fielding Abbott. See you tonight for BYU Basketball with Mark Pope, 8.30 Eastern on the app. Hi, Dipper. Go Cougs!